I like what Zig Ziglar says. He said, fear is false evidence appearing real. That is an illusion that we create in our mind. It is a state of mind that can be changed. So let's look at how we can begin to take some steps to restructure that fear, to begin to expand our visions of ourselves, to begin to increase our self-esteem. Webster said that self-esteem means confidence and satisfaction in oneself. Look at your life right now. Whatever you've done up to this point in time, your life is working. Whatever you have produced, it came out of you as a result of the kind of person that you have become. As a result of your choice, it's a result of your consciousness. Now you have to ask yourself, are you satisfied with what you have produced? Is this what you want? Would you like for things to be better than this? Do you believe that you deserve better than this? Are you content? This is it. You don't have to do every, anything else. That you have already resign yourself in life and say, well, I'm happy. I'm not starving like the people in Calcutta. Are you allowing yourself to get off the hook like that? Or do you believe somewhere in the back of your mind or in your heart that there is some other great work for you to do? There's something else that life has for you. And that's why you're here. How do we handle this fear factor? How do we increase our self-esteem? You have to begin to fortify yourself. How do we do that? I believe that you have to begin to consciously monitor your inner conversation and start talking to yourself. Start building yourself up. Sometimes the only good things you will hear about you are the things that you say to you. Young lady that was in the audience this afternoon said to me, I told myself yesterday for the first time, I'm proud of me. And she said, I felt good about that. So I'm saying, learn to be your own booster. Start building yourself up. Start encouraging yourself. Start saying, I can do this. I can make this happen. When I started thinking about becoming a speaker, I said, yes, I can do this. I can make this happen. When I start trying to convince myself I can be a businessman after flopping and failing and losing thousands of dollars and feet feeling stupid and dumb and having people take advantage of me because of what I didn't know. I had to talk to myself because people were saying to me that I was dumb. And somewhere in the back of my mind, I was saying, you're right. Look at what I've done. I had to say, no, 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 Les. Hey, hey, come on, man. Get yourself together. You can handle this. You just haven't figured it out yet. It's all right. This is your training period. This is the tuition you have to pay for what you don't know. You can do this. Other people have done it. Doesn't take an Einstein. Get you some people that can and teach you some stuff that you don't know. Get you some people that have done it successfully and learn from them. Take some seminars, workshops, read some books on how to manage a business. Change the way you see yourself and begin to tend to the personal details. Understand that nobody's going to take care of your business better than you. And when I start changing that kind of mindset of beating myself up because of my mistakes and start looking at the possibility of my doing better, of my making the adjustment that would enable me to do what I want to do successfully, things begin to change. And I say, stop beating up on yourself. You do do it. I know you do it. I've done it. It's a natural inclination for us to put ourselves down. See, we are born negative, I think, in a negative consciousness because we live in a negative world. See, you don't have to teach children to lie. They'll lie automatically. <laughs> Did you wet in your pants? No, I did not. <laughs> well, what is that? I don't know. You don't have to encourage kids to misbehave. They will do it by themselves. You don't have to encourage them to do the wrong thing. They will do it automatically. You have to correct their behavior. So I'm saying that we have to work through the challenges of life in learning how to begin to work to fortify ourselves. Repeat after me, please. I can live my dream. I can live my dream. I can find my purpose in life. I can find my purpose. And live my purpose. And live my purpose. I deserve more for myself. I deserve more from life. I deserve more from life. Shake somebody's hand on your right and left and say, you deserve more from life too. Here's some other things, ladies and gentlemen. Begin to guard your mind against negative programming. Like turn off the television. Don't watch the news. Don't watch it. I think that, that, that more people have a sense of hopelessness and anxiety about life. If you look at the news, you cannot feel good looking at the news. You'll be scared to death. You're scared to go to sleep. I mean, it turns your power down. You've got to be conscious of that. Don't pick up the newspaper and read it. No, no. I, just try this. Just experiment with yourself. Now, if your job depends upon you knowing certain things, let somebody tell you just about those things. But start filtering the stuff 
you allow to come in your mind. You know that song you used to have? I said, don't let nobody bring you no bad news. I tell my staff, look here, don't tell me any bad news while I'm on the road. Let me handle it tomorrow. I don't like anybody to tell me any bad news at night before I go to sleep. I can't do anything about it anyhow. Why let me go to sleep with that on my consciousness? No. No, and my, my staff, they know that. Say, but let it wait till tomorrow. And I have a period of time. Tell me bad news between 10 o'clock and 12 noon. After I prayed and meditated and read my books, I'm fortified. I'm ready to handle it. I deal with it and then I'm out of there and I'm going on to something else. So you've got to guard the kinds of things that you put in your mind. See, if you don't program your mind, your mind will be programmed because human beings are goal-oriented. That's why we die of broken hearts early. That's why we're running through life to early grades. We're going through life, ladies and gentlemen. And I think that Henry David Thoreau said that most men live in quiet desperation. Most of us go through life running scared. Larry D'Angie, who I think is going to be one of the greatest motivational speakers around today, told me a story, a true story of a friend of his that every day when he came home from school, when he would get to uh, a certain block in his neighborhood, there was a neighborhood dog that would chase him. And that dog would start after him barking. Boy, he would run, just running from that dog every day, every day. Finally, he just got tired of that dog chasing him every day. He said, this dog come around here today, I'm going to take a brick of stuff and bust him in the head. So he was walking home that day, minding his own business. Sure enough, same area, there was that dog there. The dog started barking, he started running, he saw a brick and he stopped and picked up the brick and turned around. And the dog got close to him, he realized the dog didn't have any teeth. He said he put the brick down and said, get on out my way. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, all our lives, many of us go through life running from things that ain't got no teeth to do us any harm. <laughs> Haven't you been afraid to do something and then after you did it, you say, whoa, if I'd known it was this easy, I would have done it before. Haven't you ever had that experience? Raise your hand. Absolutely. So we created this in our minds, false evidence appearing real. We made it real in our minds. That's why Churchill said there's nothing to fear but fear itself. That's the destructive monster. So turn off things that can contribute to your fear. Turn a deaf ear to people that all they can do is talk about how negative things are because they have bought into the consciousness of the world. Start attending workshops, seminars, listening to tapes on a daily basis to begin to recondition your mind, to retrain your thinking. Faith comes by what? Hearing and hearing and hearing. Listen to things that can empower you, that can enable you to create a new reality for yourself in a new life for yourself you might appear to be strange around most people you know most people think you're strange if you're happy today people say how you doing I said better than good whoa what's wrong with him <laughs> just go around smiling and watch people look at this this is a weird guy over here because most people don't smile watch him look at their faces in the morning here we go another Monday morning how you doing haven't had my coffee yet don't ask me see these people have not found their purpose in life. That's why they're grumpy. That's why they're miserable. That's why they're so negative. They're hurting and they want to hurt other people. So start practicing using programs for your mind. Seminars, books, workshops. Keep a journal. Record your thoughts. What's happening with you? Every day when you get up, have a journal near you. I use the Jack Boland journal so that I can write down my ideas. I keep it by my bed so I can write down my thoughts. See, ladies and gentlemen, we get three to four thoughts a year that if we would act on those thoughts, they could change our life. Don't say, well, I'll, I'll remember that. No, write that thought down. I got a thought today I wrote down. A friend of mine is in the hospital. His morale is low. They're talking about amputating his foot. He's got to feel very bad. So I said, you know, I'm going to, I'm not only am I going to see him, but I can't be there with him all the time. I said, I'm going to create a tape for him that, that he can listen to that will heighten his level of morale. We told him the other night, don't go to surgery. You are depressed. Your energy level is down. No, no, tell him not now. Don't do it now. In fact, most doctors who have any sense of awareness don't perform surgery on patients that are in a state of fear. They don't think they will make it. They wait till they're in a different state of mind. So I said, what about me? Making tapes for people that are facing physical challenges. I said, that's a good idea. 